for scientists, Antarctica is a storehouse of information. Deep within the ice is a record of our planet's most precious asset, the air. Drilling out a core of ice is like looking back across thousands of years. Trapped in its layers are small bubbles, an uncontaminated history of the atmosphere, revealing what it was once like and how much it's altered over the years. Since the 50s, we've kept much more detailed records of change, not just the air we breathe, but the upper atmosphere as well. Those records reveal the components in our atmospheric system that for millions of years have permitted life on the planet to flourish. Far from being just a lifeless mass of air, our atmosphere is actually a dynamic machine, complete with its own natural checks and balances, a system of invisible mechanisms. One of those mechanisms is the carbon dioxide cycle. I'm standing in it. In fact, I'm part of it. I breathe out. Plants store it and use it up. But CO2 has another function. After the sun's radiation has streamed down through our atmosphere to heat the world, the warmed earth gives off its heat in the form of infrared radiation. If it wasn't for the CO2 in the air, this whole process would make the earth a most unpleasant place to live. Instead of all this infrared heat escaping back into space, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere absorbs some of it. Like a blanket, it moderates the overall temperatures that we enjoy and need to survive. If this didn't happen, we'd freeze. But you can have too much of a good thing. A high level of CO2 would have the opposite effect. Temperatures would soar to extremes and we'd all bake. A greenhouse out of control. It's a delicate balance. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, we've increasingly devoured fossil fuels like oil and coal. But burning these fuels is quickly releasing massive reserves of CO2 that have taken millions of years to accumulate. Can nature cope with such a sudden change? Or are there already signs of an imbalance, heralding dramatic shifts in the Earth's climate? Using the air bubbles locked in Antarctic ice to look back across the centuries, scientists are beginning to get an answer. For 160,000 years, the levels of carbon dioxide have only fluctuated slightly. But the melted ice from the time of the Industrial Revolution shows that since then, the amounts of CO2 in our air have soared. Modern agricultural practices haven't helped either. To meet the world's rapidly expanding human population, intensive farming has increased the levels of other gases which could compound the greenhouse effect. The most prominent of these gases are nitrous oxide and methane, which has risen 160% in the last century. If climatic records show an observable rise in the Earth's temperature, then it might indicate a connection with those greenhouse gases. In fact, temperatures have been rising in the past century, admittedly only a degree or so until recently. But in the 80s, things have really heated up. In just eight years, the world record for highest temperature has been shattered four times, and this summer is shaping up to make it five. Maybe they're just natural fluctuations, although the rate of increase has scientists worried. They see retreating glaciers and unusual weather patterns as confirmation of a global imbalance, the rumblings of a massive change of our own making.